everyone, it's Miss Jones and welcome to our art lesson. For the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about my favorite element of art, color. It's going to take us a few weeks for this topic because color is such an important and complex part of art. For our introduction into color today, we're going to be creating a diagram or tool that is often used to organize and show the relationship between different colors. This is called the color wheel or a color circle, which was developed by Sir Isaac Newton in 1666. You may know Newton as the person who discovered gravity. He had an apple fall on his head and thought about how the gravity pulls things to earth. So not only did he do that, but he also helped us arrange and organize our colors into kind of a logical way. Since this discovery, scientists and artists have studied and designed numerous variations of this concept of uh, arranging colors. So there's kind of a difference in opinions on the format and how they should be arranged, but that's kind of a debate we're not going to talk about today. Um, re in reality, any color circle or color wheel that kind of presents a logical arrangement or sequence of colors um, is a color wheel. So we're going to be going over kind of the most typical color wheel you see, kind of the, the basic color wheel. It's pretty much everywhere in art, um, and this is how most artists and scientists kind of arrange it. So that's the one we're going to be looking at today. So before we go much further into our project, I wanted us to take a look at the color wheel and kind of discuss the three main categories of um, colors. Maybe you might already know these, um, but maybe you might not. So um, we're gonna kind of do a refresher of the three main categories of colors. So let's go ahead and look at this color wheel here, kind of our standard 12 color color wheel, which is what we're doing today. This is kind of the typical color wheel we usually see and kind of the arrangement of our colors. So all of these 12 colors are put into three different categories. So each color goes in a different category. Um, and this is kind of the relationship between them. Uh, our first category of colors is called primary colors. These are the colors red, yellow, and blue. In color theory, which is when we talk about colors, Primary colors are the three colors that cannot be mixed or formed by any combination of other colors. What that means is if you want either red, yellow, or blue, want to use that, you have to have the paint straight from the tube. There's no way of mixing any colors to get those colors. Um, you have to go straight from the tube with a pure pigment. That being said, these three colors are kind of our basis for all other colors, meaning all other colors are derived from these three hues. That leads us into our second category. Our second category of colors is called secondary, easy enough. These colors are green, orange, and purple. And these colors are formed by mixing two of the primary colors together. So we get green by mixing blue and yellow. We get orange by mixing yellow and red. And we get purple or violet by mixing red and blue. Now the last group or category of colors is called tertiary colors. I always remember third tertiary. And these are colors formed by mixing a primary with a secondary. So usually these colors have a two word name, such as blue green or red violet, yellow orange. So it's kind of easy to remember the names of these tertiary colors because it's always the primary and secondary that are mixed together. It's just those two words squashed together. So we go from three primary, three secondary, and then six tertiary. So tertiary colors can be kind of confusing. We always call them with the two names, blue, green, yellow, green, but you may have other names for them, such as um, lime green or um, aqua marine is another one, like a rust red, right? These are other words that we use to kind of um, talk about tertiary colors. But for this class, we're gonna be talking about them with our um, two-worded name blue, green, red, violet, 
yellow, orange, and so on. So that's kind of the breakdown of our color wheel. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary, and they kind of build off of each other. All these colors on the color wheel have variations to them. So not only do we have these different categories of colors, but each color can kind of be changed in a way to create almost like a new version of that color. So here's some more vocabulary words that we use to talk about color. So the first vocab word is hue. We use the word hue to describe a pure color. So each color on this color wheel is a hue. We call it a red hue, a orange hue, a red-violet hue, a blue-green hue, and so on. So you can change the variation of these hues by adding in either black, white, or gray. So to put it simply, tints, tones, and shades are variations of hues or colors on the color wheel. A tint is a hue to which white has been added. So for example, the color pink is considered a tint of red because red added to white equals a pink when you mix colors together. A shade is a hue in which black has been added. For example, if you add red with and black, finally, it creates a, tone a burgundy color, right? So you the get color kind of darker in which gray has been added. That red. So both black and white have been added to the color to create a tone. So it kind of darkens the original hue, but also makes it a little more subtle. So we won't really be dealing much with tints, shades, and tones because we aren't necessarily painting this year. But they're good words to know, um, especially when you want to uh, talk about kind of lightening a color or darkening a color. So today we're really going to be maybe using the words tint and shade when we're talking about kind of uh, how hard we press down on our um, paper. So like I said, today we're talking about tints and shades in terms of pressure. Um, on the paper rather than necessarily mixing our, um, our colors together. Uh, so this is also called value, which we'll talk about kind of later this year. So when I say the word value, I'm talking about the tint or the shade or kind of the pressure in which you push on the crayon. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit with our project today. Um, our project today. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to make our own color wheel, but we're kind of going to try and mix it up and make some variations of hues using pressure from our hand. Um, so we're going to be making a 12 color color wheel today with our primary, secondary, and tertiary. So first I'm going to show you kind of how to set up your wheel and then we're kind of going to add a little bit of um, spunk to it so it's not kind of just a, a plain old circle. So what you're going to need today for your um, project is you're going to need a white piece of paper. This is what we're going to draw on. So you should have a blank white piece of paper um, to use. Um, you also may want to have a black piece of paper. So at the end, we're going to cut out our wheel and we're going to paste it on the black paper. It kind of brings out the colors a little bit more, makes it really vibrant. So if you have a black piece of paper, um, I would um, use it today. If you're going to cut out your a wheel like I am, you can have scissors and glue so you can um, put it onto your black paper. If you don't have black paper, that's okay. You can always just leave it on your white paper. Um, you're also going to need a ruler today. So we're gonna draw some straight lines, kind of divide our pie up. So you'll want to have your uh, ruler to create some straight lines. And to create our circle, you're going to need something round. So you can hand draw it if you'd like. I get nervous about hand drawing circles. So I went ahead and found a plate that fit on my piece of paper pretty nicely. So maybe find like a medium sized plate you can trace for your circle. Um, it's kind of helpful, I find. Finally, what you're going to need is something to color with. I recommend doing either colored pencils or crayons. No markers today um, because we're going to be using the pressure of our hand to kind of create shades and value, right? Uh, saturation. We want to have um, crayons or colored pencils. It's easier to do that than markers. Um, use whatever one you have the most colors of. I found that the 24 pack of crayons is the most helpful. 
um, because it has all the colors I need. They're all labeled um, with the tertiary colors, primary colors, all those good things. So um, I'm going to be using crayons today. Okay, to get started with our project, what we're going to do is you're gonna need your plate or circle, maybe you have a compass, and we're gonna trace our circle for our wheel. So we need to kind of have our base of our wheel on our white piece of paper here. Let's go ahead and draw that. Uh, so there we go. So I have my circle, my wheel. Our next step is to divide our wheel into our 12 colors. So you're going to need your pencil and your ruler and we're going to divide up our uh, circle here into 12 parts. Um, they should be kind of equal, um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, usually they turn out mostly equal and don't really look that um, different from each other. But here's kind of how I like to divide it. So. I'm going to divide my circle in half, or what looks like half. So I have my circle in half here. Now we have 12 sections, right? So now that I divided it in half, each half is going to have six sections because 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now what I'm going to do is divide my circle in half the other way. So I'm gonna divide it vertically. There we go. So I have now it into four parts, yes? So 12 divided by four is three. So each of these sections is going to have three pieces in them. So how we like to do that is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put it diagonally through two of the sections, the two sections that I diagonal from each other. And I'm going to use this up here to kind of, to kind of show my size of my pie. And I'm going to try and kind of eyeball how big these pie sections are going to be. And that looks about right, so I'm going to do a line through the entire thing. So now I've made two more slices. And in those that section, I'm going to do that a second time. So I'm going to kind of line it up, maybe look and see how big my sections are, try and make them as even as I can, and then draw a line through them both. Ta-da! So they're pretty close just by eyeballing it. Um, it's hard to see whether they're different sizes or not, but now we have our um, six, seven, eight, and we'll have to do the it on the other side. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other two sections. So I kind of look at this section to see how big my piece of pie is going. There we go. So now we have our 12 section of um, pie here. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna teach you the uh, organization of the colors in the color wheel. So um, as you took a look at the color wheel, you might've been able to see kind of how they're arranged, but there's a really great way of remembering kind of the pattern of our color wheel. So remember we have those three categories of colors. We have our primary, our secondary, and our tertiary. So I'm gonna show you how those kind of line up in our um, circle here. And we're gonna kind of label each section so we know which is which. So we're gonna start with our primary. So maybe at one of our top um, sections here, we're gonna put a P above it for primary. In the color wheel, a primary color always has a tertiary color on either side. So there's always a tertiary next to our primary. So go ahead and label those two with T's. Our primary colors are always equidistant from each other on the uh, color wheel. Same with our secondaries. So there's going to be in the same number of sections between each of our primaries. That's what it means. So our uh, primary always has tertiaries on either side and our pattern always goes tertiary, primary, 
tertiary, secondary. So with that, we're going to put a secondary next to our tertiary. And we're gonna keep going with this pattern, TPTS, tertiary, primary, tertiary, secondary, around our entire circle. So we have uh, tertiary, so between, uh, on either side of our secondary, there's also always tertiaries. So tertiary is going to be between every, um, each, uh, secondary and primary. So tertiary, primary, tertiary, secondary. Tertiary, primary, tertiary, secondary. So if you've noticed, it always goes PSPS, -S, right? Between our T's. So we have tertiary, primary, tertiary, secondary. TPTS, 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 right? And then it starts over, so it keeps going and going. So that's how we, where we know um, kind of how to organize our um, color wheel using our categories. So I told you we were going to um, uh, spice up our color wheel a little bit, so that's what we're gonna do right now. Think back to our pattern, um, unit back in a couple months ago. Think about different patterns you like, um, different types of lines, maybe different shapes. Um, and we're going to create a pattern in each of these sections. Now, you only get to pick one pattern because we're gonna do the same pattern in each section. So if you want it maybe to look like a spider web, you could do kind of like wavy lines. If you want to do polka dots, you could do polka dots checkers, um, be creative with your pattern. Um, it's kind of whatever, but each section should have the same pattern in it. So I'm just gonna do kind of like a, um, kind of like a lined pattern, I think. Um, you could do even a spiral if you wanna do like a spiral in it, um, that's fine. If you wanna do big curlies, that's cool with me too. our pattern all done on our color wheel, you're going to need your colors. So get out your colored pencils or your crayons. Um, I grabbed my 24 pack. I just dumped all my crayons out um, so I could see them. Um, I got rid of any ones I knew that weren't in the pile. So like browns, uh, grays, blacks, this peach, a pink, right? That's a tint. Um, so I'm going to put those kind of to the side. Um, I really liked the crayons because they have the tertiary colors uh, or all the colors kind of labeled on here, um, which is great. So we're first going to start with our primary colors. So go ahead and find your primary colors. Those are red, yellow, and blue. These are our primary colors. So we're going to start by coloring with our primary colors. So I'm going to... Um, mark my primary colors here on my uh, piece of paper just to kind of mark them because I know we might all work at different paces. So usually we go clockwise around our circle. So we have red, our red and then if we go clockwise to our next primary, that's going to be yellow. And then if we go around, our last one will be blue. So like I said, they're equidistant from each other, so you should have them evenly spaced all on your P's. So those are our primaries. Our secondaries are our primary colors mixed together. So in the middle, the secondary between our two primary colors on the wheel will be what that those two colors create when mixed. So when we mix red and yellow, we get orange, which is our secondary. So find your orange and we're going to put that there and kind of put that one off to the side. If we spin around our circle, our next two primaries are 
yellow and blue. If we mix those together, we get the secondary in the middle, which is green. So I'm gonna mark that on there, green. And if we spin it around, our last secondary is between our blue and our red. So if you put uh, mix blue and red together, you get violet or purple. So on my crayon here, it says violet slash purple. And I'm gonna put that one right there. So I'm kind of just marking out where my colors are going um, so that when we have independent work time, we can kind of fill them in ourselves. But I wanted to kind of um, at least get the organization down with you. So now we're on to our tertiary colors. So if you recall, a tertiary color is um, the color that you get when you mix a primary with a secondary. So if you notice our tertiaries are in between our primaries and secondaries. So kind of how we figured out our secondaries, we look at the primary and the secondary and the color between that is um, the color we get when we mix those two um, together, our primary and our secondary. And if you remember, tertiaries are easily named because they um, are basically the name of the primary and the secondary combined. So in between red and orange, we have the tertiary red orange pretty easy um so a lot of times tertiary colors have um nicknames i kind of mentioned that earlier they have nicknames like uh like red orange could be like sunburst or um yellow green is lime green or we have um you know red violet is magenta so these are nicknames that we have for these colors for the sake of today and um talking about colors we're just going to go with the kind of traditional name of um the two the primary and the secondary kind of squash together okay um also another reason i like the crayons so let's go ahead and find our red orange the reason i like the crayons is because they have the tertiaries named the traditional names so this says red orange right whereas a lot of them on markers um they'll have something like like this one here says like tiger orange right is that red orange we don't really know um, so that's why I like the crayons because they kind of give it really clear for the tertiary. So our red orange here, I'm going to mark that between my red and my orange. And I'm going to turn my wheel and find, all right, my secondary and primary, my secondary is orange, my primary is yellow. So that would be yellow orange. So go ahead and find your yellow orange here and we'll mark that there. If we turn, we have our primary is yellow and our secondary is green. So we have yellow green. So there's that one. If you notice as we're going around our circle, um, you can see that there's kind of a gradual transition between our um, colors here. And that's what I really like about adding the tertiaries into our color wheel is that it gives kind of a more gradual transition and kind of gives us um, a name and kind of a face of those colors that we usually create here. Um, all right, next one, we have our secondary green, our primary blue. So we have blue green. So maybe the, usually we think of this as turquoise or aqua, right? That's our blue green. For our next one, we have our primary blue, our secondary purple or violet. So usually this is blue violet. Um, also, we call this one indigo. So I have both a blue violet and an indigo. So I'm kind of going to choose which one I feel like fits that the best. Mm, it's pretty even. I think I'm going to choose indigo for mine because it's a little bit more on the blue side. This one seems pretty like a, like a royal purple, a little bit more too purple for me. I kind of like this one. I think it's a good in between. So I'm going to use indigo. All right, and our last one, we have our secondary is purple, our primary is red. So we have red violet, right? Um, also, I noticed in this crayon set, we have a violet red and a red violet. Um, so I'm not really sure which one is the best one. So again, I'm gonna chew, I'm gonna kind of test them both and see. So this violet red seems a little too pink for me. Um, I kind of like the darkness of the um, vi red violet, so that's the one I'm going to use is the red violet. It seems a little bit more 
but are in between. So there we go. I have all my colors now. I've tested them out. I know which ones I want to do on my color wheel here. Um, so now what we get to do is we're going to start filling in our color. So remember earlier I talked about um, tints and shades and I kind of talked about how we're going to try and create those a little bit with um, just using pressure. So um, we call using pressure or like a variation of um, kind of color. Um, one hue, right, is a um, value. So we're doing values, not necessarily tints and shades but we're trying to do a value. So it's either gonna be really saturated saturated, or a little bit duller by just our pressure. So um, kind of practice, if you wanna to off to the side, kind of practice your pressure, how light you can do something, maybe how um, saturated you can make it. So usually I can kind of make it like three kind of uh, pressures there. Um, and I'm gonna kind of try and, and start doing that kind of on my pattern. So I liked picking kind of a simpler pattern so that I could kind of go between these three values here. So here's kind of my darkest value. Um, it's kind of my most saturated, meaning the brightness of the color. There's a lot of brightness in there because I'm really pushing hard on there. Um, and now I'm gonna kind of go back down to my uh, kind of a lighter hand, uh, try doing kind of a medium pressure here. I might have started too light. I'm kind of going to go over it again. You might want to do a few layers of it maybe. Kind of see if that darkens it up a little bit more. And then I'm going to do kind of like a really light one. So I kind of liked going over it a few times. That kind of helped. It's still not as um, dark, but if you're using kind of a light hand and you're like, well, I think that might be too light. Like you start down here and you go, oh, that's kind of the same, looking the same. You might want to um, kind of do it that way. But this is what you're going to be doing kind of for your um, whole color wheel. So each color you'll want to kind of do your different um, values, your different pressures to kind of get those, um, that brightness and then kind of like dullness too. So I finished my red. Now I'm going to move on to my next one. You can kind of jump around if you want. You can do maybe all your primaries first or your, um, and then your secondaries and your tertiaries, or you can kind of just, um, kind of go around the circle clockwise or counterclockwise, however you want to do it. Um, I kind of like moving in a circle because I like to see the gradual pro um, progression of my colors. So I'm going to grab red, orange next. Make sure when you go to the next color that you check to it's that it's the right color. Um, you might see like, oh, yellow, orange and think it's orange. Um, so uh, make sure to check. Maybe you wanna test it again. Um, I like to at least just double check before I put it down there just to make sure it's the same one that uh, I uh, marked at the beginning.
Friday, everybody. So we finished coloring our color wheel. It looks spectacular. Um, looks like a professional color wheel. I love it. Um, so ready for our next step. If you are uh, done with your color wheel, we're going to cut it out. So uh, at the beginning, I said you can either leave it on your white paper, but mine got kind of messy. So I'm going to cut mine out and put mine on a black piece of paper. Um, but if you want to just cut it out and keep it like this, you can. That's totally fine. Just remember to put your name on it. So I like putting my uh, color wheel on a black piece of paper because it looks really nice, kind of stands out, um, kind of brings out those colors a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to glue it down here. Doesn't really matter which direction. I'm going to try and put it in the middle as much as I can. Ta-da! Maybe you want to make this square. You can always cut off your ends to make this a square piece of paper with your color wheel on it. But voila, we have our beautiful um, color wheel here. Uh, I'm going to put my name on it. Um, like that. And there you go. We have our color wheel today we learned about primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. We um, figured out their order on the color wheel. Um, so definitely keep this project. So like I said, for the next few weeks, we're gonna be talking about color. We're gonna look at the color wheel a lot because it's our tool for um, kind of finding relationships with color. So keep this where you keep your art supplies or around your um, workspace so you can have access to it. Um, for the next few weeks as we work with color, which is gonna be super fun, I can't wait. So thank you everyone, hopefully you enjoyed this activity and your color wheel turned out really awesome. Um, I'm super happy with mine and can't wait to see all of yours. So thank you very much everyone, bye.